on the morning of November 21st, 1980. This casino's luck ran out. In Las Vegas this morning, a huge fire is raging out of control at the MGM Grand Hotel. Many of the guests are still in their rooms and are calling and waving for help. I looked up and I was just amazed. This huge building, which at that time was the largest hotel in Las Vegas, just smoke pouring out of windows and doors and out of the roof area. The blaze was one of the worst hotel fires in U.S. history. 85 guests and employees died, and another 600 were injured. What chain of events caused this fire and turned the glittering casino into a smoldering cavern? Witnesses said the fire began next to the casino in the small restaurant called The Deli. It was started by the electrical connection to a little compressor that cooled a pie rack. An employee passing through that area noticed it, uh, ran to uh, you know call for help. Uh, then he ran to get a hose line and brought it back into the area. He was going to fight the fire. And by then it's breaking out and starting to involve the uh, ceiling area. And so they fled. As the fire spread below, the deli's wood fiber ceiling began to warm. It wasn't long before the wood burst into flames, releasing hot, combustible gas. The ceiling then radiated the booths. They got ignited, and the fire became pretty furious. Within a matter of seconds, perhaps a minute, everything in the room is burning. Emmons concluded that once the deli started burning, hot smoke and flames poured out the doorway and into the casino. We looked over and there was a string of smoke that was probably about two thirds to the height of the ceiling that had fanned out. And just as we got down to the casino level, uh, the fireball broke out of the delicatessen with people scattering like flies. Hot smoke and flames from the deli ignited the plastic on the ceiling of the casino. Waves of fire rolled through the hotel. The front perimeter of the ball was intense black smoke, and there were just little fingers of flame that would erupt out of it. I was the last one out, and I looked down, and the entire end of the hotel was engulfed in flames. And it was like, wow, it's just absolutely incredible. The fire destroyed the casino and killed seven people there. What could have fueled the deadly blaze? One investigator knew that the answer lay in the ashes of the deli, and he targeted two major suspects. The flammable polyurethane restaurant booths and the wood fiber ceiling tiles. With the aid of a computer simulation, engineer Dave Lucht investigated the two suspects. No one had ever used a computer to model a fire. The problem had hundreds of variables. Predicting how fires will behave in buildings is a very complex engineering problem. And we have to start with very small pieces of information of this size. This apparatus is called the cone calorimeter. It exposes a sample of combustible material like plastic or wood to a radiant heat source and it gradually gets warmer and warmer until it ignites. Ignition. And what we're trying to determine is the material properties of each material, such as how much carbon monoxide it produces, carbon dioxide, smoke, and rate of heat release. Scientists could watch the simulated model of the deli burn in exactly the same way that the real one burned. The computer model revealed that the seat cushions and ceiling tiles were both responsible for spreading the flames. So the computer program had successfully modeled the fire. Seven people died when flames gutted the first floor. 
But as firefighters evacuated the top floors of the MGM Grand Hotel, they found 65 more victims. No alarms rang on the upper floors of the MGM, and many guests only learned of the fire when fire trucks arrived. By then, people were trapped. As the fire department rolled up on the scene, there were people actually leaning out of the windows, standing on balconies, screaming for help, many people waving towels and sheets to attract attention. On the 22nd or 23rd floor, we came to the elevator lobby, and at one point there was five or six bodies just laying there. They were covered with black smoke and soot, and uh, the, the soot was so thick that if you would pick up an arm, there would be the perfect clean outline of a hand on the carpet. And it was obvious they died there, overcome by smoke, waiting for elevators that never came. One of the mysteries was how the smoke traveled from the casino up to the floors where the people died. Custer's first clue came in an elevator lobby. He found wispy patterns of soot around the buttons. He had his first suspect, the elevator shafts. Next, he rolled out the hotel blueprints and found another suspect. The hotel wings were separated by large seismic joints designed to let the building sway during an earthquake. He searched the hotel and found the joints burned and sooty. Between the buildings are tall shafts that extend from the casino all the way up to the top of the building. Smoke and hot toxic fumes boiled up these shafts and came out through openings on each floor. Custer climbed to the hotel's top floor and found one more culprit. The air conditioner had safety doors called dampers that would snap shut to limit the spread of smoke. They were getting such high ambient air temperatures that the sensing dampers were closing, shutting down the entire system. And it's my understanding as a cure for this, maintenance personnel took lag screws and mechanically fasten the dampers open, thereby negating their effect. The propped open air conditioner, the elevator shafts, and the seismic joints filled the upper hallways with noxious smoke. 22 guests choked on the fumes while struggling to escape. 25 died in rooms, some with no obvious signs of smoke inhalation. When you go into a room that's absolutely clean, and the people are there under no distress and no panic, and yet they're not alive, well, it's disheartening for one thing, and then, man, you want to know what happened here. I mean, we've got to know what happened here. What I saw when I came into this room was what appeared to be a surprising lack of smoke. The walls and the ceiling and the floor did not appear to have any noticeable stains. In looking at the guest rooms, I noticed that the air supply came through small grills over the top of the guest room doors. I removed several of these grills and noticed that the air filters behind the grills were tightly packed, literally clogged with heavy black soot particles. Custer discovered the room's air conditioners had drawn air in from the smoky hallways. The thick black smoke had been absorbed or filtered out by the air filters, but that wasn't enough to filter out the toxic carbon monoxide and other gases that killed the occupants. They probably had no idea that there was anything toxic. They would have smelled smoke, but they wouldn't have seen smoke. The invisible poisonous carbon monoxide replaced the oxygen in the victim's blood. Their central nervous system slowly shut down, lulling them into a deadly sleep. This is truly what would be called an accident, where a huge number of small items all came together at the same time and resulted in a disaster. Bad luck turned relatively minor defects into a major catastrophe. 
The flammable deli booths and ceiling tiles, the locking stairway doors, the propped open air conditioner, and the smoke spreading seismic joints all played a part in the tragedy. Six months after the fire, the MGM Grand reopened with a $5 million fire safety system. We have over 1,250 uh, system generated smoke detectors. What I mean by that, they're all tied into a central computer. We have over 8,000 audio evacuation speakers. Um, we have water flows and tampers and sprinklers throughout the building. We have over 30,000 sprinkler heads. However, not all hotels are as safe as this. When you come to a high-rise building, you need to know where the exits are, how you can get into that building, how you can get out of that floor. Take a moment before you go into your room at night and think, where are the stairwells? How can I get down them? If I wake up in the middle of the night and it's dark, where do I go for help? 